Hello and welcome back to the Jory Pig Investor channel. Today I'm going to be going through, is MasterCard stock a buy right now? What is MasterCard? Ticker symbol MA. MasterCard allows users to make payments by creating a range of payment solutions and services using its brands, which include MasterCard, Maestro and Cirrus. The company provides a range of products and solutions that support payment products, which customers can offer to their cardholders. The firm's service facilitates transactions on its core network amongst account holders, merchants, financial institutions, businesses, governments and other organisations in Martin globally. Its products include consumer credit, consumer debt, prepaid and commercial credit and debt. The company also provides integrated offerings such as cyber and intelligence products, information and analyst services, identity verification services, consulting, loyalty and reward programmes and processing and opening of banks. Some key stats to do with MasterCard, it is based in the United States of America, it is in the technology industry, has a massive market cap of over $445 billion. The company went public back in 2006, it has over 24,000 employees, has a very nice dividend growth streak at 12 years with a massive 5 year dividend growth of 14.8% and does have a very small yield at 0.55%, but it, like I say, with that big dividend growth, those numbers are going to soon slowly start to creep up, and over time, if you were to buy in now, you're going to really reap the rewards long term. Its one-year performance on the chart it is actually up 31% over the last year, and you can see it has had pretty much a steady climb the whole way through, only one small dip back in November last year. The earnings call for MasterCard and fundamental analysis. MasterCard's transactions and distribution saw an impressive growth by climbing over 30% last year. It also has a strong growth outlook for 2024, underpinned by robust consumer spending and healthy business fundamentals. Net revenue are anticipated to climb at an even higher end of the low double digit range, while operating expenses are expected to increase at the lower end of that range as well. However, a new tax in Brazil will push operating expenses up about 1% point. The company has reiterated its dominance in virtual card solutions, securing pivotal renewals and partnerships that have promised to continue growth. Notably, they actually renewed their relations with JP Morgan and Fleet Corp, two of the largest commercial issuers in the United States. So this is massive news for MasterCard and can only be a positive for them over the long term. This further solidifies their position in the market. Expansions also comes in the form of a strategic shift with BMP Paribus Fortis moving their business credit portfolio to the company in Belgium. Their current fundamental analysis shows that they have really good positive operating income at 14.6 billion. They have a positive net income at 11.2 billion. Their free cash flow is in a very healthy position at 10.9 billion. They have seen positive three year revenue growth at 18% and massive three-year ROE growth of 142%. They are showing very, very good short and long-term solvency, have a phenomenal Altman Z score over 10.3, also have brilliant high coverage at 30.6, and the only negatives are they have positive net debt at 5.2 billion, but for a company their size really isn't going to be that much of an issue, and they do have a slightly high debt to equity ratio at 2.07. But overall, you can see their fundamental analysis is very, very strong and as expected for a company the size of MasterCard. Moving on to their free cash flow position, we can actually dive into it deeper here and have a look over the last 10 years. Free cash flow is the money a company has left over after it's paid for all of its expenses and any investments it needs to make to keep the company running smoothly. We can see from the graph, MasterCard has some of the most impressive free cash flow numbers in the world. It has consistently increased its free cash flow at a steady rate for over 10 years now and since COVID has absolutely exploded. Companies the size of MasterCard, you've got to expect to trade at that premium price. These are some of the reasons why. When you see free cash flow as healthy as this and a company with as strong fundamentals as they have, you've just got to expect that if you're going to want to buy into this company, it's probably not going to be likely to drop down to what would be considered a good price or a cheap price. But you still want to get it on the dips and you still want don't want to be overpaying for it, but you sometimes just got to bite the bullet and pay slightly over what you would usually expect for other companies that are maybe more mid to large cap rather than extremely large cap. It also has very low FCF payout ratio, only 19%. They've got massive potential to grow their dividends and they also do a lot of share buybacks, which is only going to further increase their price. MasterCard's discounted cash flow model. 
So the DCF model is a way of estimating the current value of a company based on its projected future cash flows adjusted for the time value of money. The DCF valuation process calculates the current present value of a company forecasted cash flow based on selected operating models. MasterCard's current price is $477. And when I plugged in a terminal growth at negative 2.2% and a discounted rate at 9.2%, it came out of being worth $118, which would be an overvaluation of 75%. When putting in a discounted rate at 8.8% and a terminal growth at 0%, they were overvalued at 49%, being worth $241. And when putting in a terminal growth at 2.2% and a discounted rate at 8.4%, you can see the best case scenario, it was still overvalued at 24%, being worth $362. You've got to bear in mind that their terminal growth rate is actually a lot higher than what they're, I've put here as the best case scenario and is likely to be a lot higher than this over the coming years. But I always have to play it conservative and keep my numbers consistent. MasterCard's relative valuation. So what we're going to look into next is to see what their prices are for their relative valuation. By doing this, we can then work out the intrinsic value of MasterCard and then we can come up with a conclusion on if it is a current buy, hold or sell. The relative valuation is used to value a company by comparing it to other competitors based on certain metrics. The metrics it uses include EV to revenue, EV to EBITDA, and PE ratios. So when I plugged in the numbers for MasterCard on their relative valuation, the worst case scenario came out of being worth an overvaluation of 41%, being worth $282. Their base case scenario was overvalued at 23%, being worth $365. And their best case scenario was still overvalued at 18% being worth $389. The intrinsic value for MasterCard, now that we've got both the relative valuation and the DCF valuation, we can add the two together and divide by two to find out the intrinsic value. Worst case scenario came out of being worth $200.50. Average case being worth $303.50. And the best case being worth $375.50. The Wall Street estimates is then the final method that I look into for if I believe a company is at a fair price. The Wall Street estimates are an average estimate of a public company's quarterly earnings and revenues that lead to a valuation of that particular company. The numbers are forecasted by a company-specific analyst who provides research on that particular company and therefore comes with what they believe is an accurate valuation. There are multiple analysts for companies the size of MasterCard. The worst case scenario, they believed it would be worth $416. The average case scenario, they believed it would be worth $518. And the best case scenario, they believed it would be worth $645. So you can see these prices are a little bit closer to its current price. And these are quite reassuring considering these are some of the top analysts looking into this company. And they believe that even on the average case, it is now actually being undervalued. Whereas if we compare it to our intrinsic value, it was looking like it was very much overvalued. So what does this mean? Well, what we can do now is add all three together and we can get a worst, best and average case scenario. Worst case scenario, looks like MasterCard would be worth $272, which is a massive undervaluation on its current price. And if you were wanting to put a 10% margin of safety on this, you'd be looking to buy at $244.80. And with a 20% margin of safety, you'd be looking to buy at $217.60. The average case was only worth $375. And with a 10% margin of safety, you'd be still looking to buy at $337.30. 20% margin of safety, you'd be looking to buy at $300. And even on their best case scenario being worth $465.60, this is still under their current price. And if you did want to put a 10% margin of safety on this, you'd be looking to buy at $419. And with a 20% margin of safety, you'd be looking to buy at $372. Going off the numbers shown, you would think you need to still stay well away from this stock. It looks extremely overvalued and looks like a stock that you would not want to touch. But... This is a very exclusive company that has such strong fundamentals across the board, I can only ever see it going to be trading at that premium price. Even though it pays a very small dividend, it is growing at a fantastic rate with the company like MasterCard, not going to just be buying for the dividend, but also the capital appreciation of such company. Having said that, you do still want to buy at a sensible price. You wouldn't want to be buying in and then it potentially going sideways or backwards for the next few years and not making much back from that position that you've opened up, especially for a company like MasterCard where you're not gonna be getting that money back through dividends for a very long time. So you still wanna make sure, is that price the right price for you? Personally, I wouldn't mind the price going sideways for a good couple of years because I am holding my positions for 30 years plus. So even if the price was stagnant for a couple of years, I know that I'm holding a quality company and I know that my yield on cost is gonna be growing at a fantastic rate and I will be happy to hold this company for that 30 year plus period where I believe it is still going to skyrocket and go up massively over that time frame. The company is very similar to Visa and I've only got good things to say about both of these companies. But 
at its current price. I'm not stupid, and even by putting in the best case scenario, it is still slightly overpriced. I would personally look to buy at around about that 5 to 10% margin of safety on that best case price, as I do believe that I'm happy to pay a little bit more for these premium companies and look at my best case prices rather than average case that I would do for most of the stocks that I would be purchasing into. This is again the beauty of investing, where you can decide yourself what you want to do. Would you be looking still to buy at the worst case price? the average case or the best case, let me know in the comment section down below. Is MasterCard a stock that you currently hold? Personally, it is actually in my portfolio right now. I have a small position in MasterCard that I would love to add to. But like I say, I would just need the time to be right and the price to be right. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you've got any other stocks that you want to see, please let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. This is the Geordie Pig Investor. Over and out.